Hello again, everyone. Thank you for joining us for our latest a round of Scottish gin, uh, which takes us all the way to Orkney today. So um, we're absolutely delighted to have Stuart and Adele, the co-founders of Deer Nest Distillery, with us today. So I guess on that note, we'll bring them in. Are you there, guys? Yep. Hello. How are you doing? Yeah. Hello. How Hello. are you? You're good, thanks. Yes. Yeah. Good, good. Staying alive. Yeah. You're right in front of the stills there. I hope they're not on. <laughs> No, not on today. Uh, yep. They're on. Uh, they'll be on tomorrow, and they're on the day before. So uh, having a rest day between uh, bottling and labelling and things like that before we get the still back on. Fantastic. Okay, so well, we touched on there. You know, your your um, Deerness distillery. You're sitting in the distillery right there. For in, the, in Deerness, funnily it, enough. Exactly. <laughs> um, for those that don't know, just you know, just remind us of the products that you you make there. Yep, so we've got uh, two gins of vodka and we'll do a coffee liqueur, which is a rum-based liqueur. So um, sea glass gin being our sort of first um, expression to the market um, in conjunction with our vodka we brought out into the wild vodka. Yeah. And then 2019 was scuttle gin, which we brought out um, to commemorate the 100th year of the uh, scuttling of the fleet up here in Orkney. And then um, we've got our new Arcadian Moon coffee liqueur, um, which we brought out. August was last year. Last year. Yeah, yeah, I've I've got my eye on that. I've yet I've yet to try it, but just it just looks so good. It looks so good. So uh, <laughs> you guys, we know we've been to, to the distillery. We've met you, so we know a little bit more about you. But um, for those that don't, can you tell us how you know you're not originally from Orkney? How did your family come to be in Orkney, and what inspired you to start the distillery? Yeah, so um, so born I'm Australian and. Uh, we all hold that yeah, we're all out. Australian yeah. now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and um, we moved here 2014, so we've been here. Yeah, almost six years. Yeah, almost six years. And um, we we first moved here. It wasn't to set up a distillery, but um, it's been a sort of a hobby and a passion of mine for probably 20 years now. So both met at university and we made um, beers, wines, spirits, and snaps and things. Some really good. Some horrendous, <laughs> but you, you learn from those mistakes, I think. So, having that 20 years of just bucking around doing it as a sort of personal stuff um, has really helped us to the point of, you know, using some really lovely award winning spirits just now. Um, so, in terms of coming to Orkney, um, I think back in 2000, we actually lived in Cape Ness for four years, and uh, which is not too far away from where we are now. Um, come to Orkney quite a lot of times. I just really fell in love with the whole of the Scottish Isles. Mm -hmm. Um, in the UK and in the Wales as well, and uh, sort of fell in love with Scotland. But moved back out to Australia, had all our kids, had our careers, and got to a point in our career. I just, uh, Your career might have been a midlife <laughs> crisis. I'm not sure. But, uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, decided to, to change our lifestyle. So I used to work in the mining and the oil and gas industry, and spent a lot of time away from the family. Um, we've got three young kids. Um, well, they were young kids, a bit older now, they're sort of yep. 13, uh, 14, yeah, <laughs> 13, 12 and 8. Who, who's so, counting? Who's counting? Yeah, yeah. Um, And me being at home more often was uh, a better, better for the family, so yeah. we moved here to Walkney. Um, at the time we were actually deciding to set up the distillery, there was no one I'm doing on on Orkney. Mm -hmm. Um two whiskey distilleries, and I think uh, there's actually now three producers on the island, and we all sort of popped up at the same time, or the, the idea popped at the same time. Yeah. And, um, and away we went. So, so here we go. Yeah, so now we've uh, been going. The distillery's four years old, or the, the, the company's four years old. Um, we've been distilling now for just over three years, I think. Fantastic. And that must have been quite a difficult decision to go from Australia, which is also, you know, renowned for attracting young families and having all that kind of, I mean, there's lots of fresh air in Scotland, but the, I guess that still must have been quite a difficult decision. Yeah, a lot of people think we're crazy who live here. Um. <laughs> <laughs> but all our, our family are here, so it, it's yeah, lovely well. to be back, you know, so the children can have their grandparents and their uncle and auntie and, yeah. you know, that. That's what's important, you know, when everyone's young and everything, making family bond, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So my brother's in Aberdeen, um, he works there, and there's a little baby there, so we're 
much closer. Yeah. You know, Orkney to Aberdeen sounds like, sounds like a long way. It's uh, yeah. It's not really compared to, compared to Australian traveling. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. We we've done the flight over twenty minutes mm. from Aberdeen to Orkney, pretty much. Yeah. It's um. Yeah. It's easy. by the time you take up, you're up in the air for twenty minutes and you're back down again. Yeah. 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 No, but you've certainly it's picked a beautiful true. part of Orkney and a beautiful part of Scotland to live. So we see the appeal. We yeah, absolutely. <laughs> And so you mentioned there you, you did a lot of experimenting over like, you know, um, your own sort of um, youth, if you like, and uh, up to the point of creating the distillery. Was that just on little, um, you know, small copper pot stills? How did you go about creating sea glass gin, for example, in advance of, of launching it? Yeah, so we, we sort of started off using like vodka bases and things like that. And just obviously for the really sort of 2015 we sort of decided we're going to build a distillery. Um, we did a lot of um, experimentation with botanicals, you know, just trying to get the flavor profile. Um, and for us, it was getting that start, middle, and finish. So you got a journey of flavor when you're drinking a you know, gin. Um, so everyone liked visiting us because whenever they came round, we'd go, try this. And we'd <laughs> yeah. like produce a jam jar that had something new in it that we'd made, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. that's right. So, so that was good fun. Well, like I said, you know, obviously. 20 plus years ago when we were at university, um, we made a lot of, lots of kits, you know, demijohns and kits like that, yeah. um, beer kits, wine kits. Um, and I think just the experimenting with that sort of stuff and you know, getting your hand, head around how the interactions between spirits and flavours and flavour profiles work um, really gives you an understanding of, of gin. It's like food as well, I mean, what, what compares correctly with, with, with food and drink. Um, really helps to, to develop you know, fantastic gins and, and, and spirits. Yeah, well, yeah, I think the thing, living in Australia as well, we had such, you know, the variety of food and the different taste mm. profiles and the, you know, the, the Thai and, you know, Asian influences as well were yeah. fantastic, weren't they? And we love, you know, eating all that sort of food. So we, we love food. <laughs> so, yeah. so that helps as well yeah. when you come to combining flavours, yeah. you know, and taste profiles. Yeah. Well, you've made amazing um, gins anyway. And I mean, your sea glass has, um, you know, it's it's always received high praise and it, uh, you guys have won a lot of awards in particular, I guess, with it being, um, you know, uh, it's been on the market longer than Scuttled. So, um, but so I, I guess on the subject of Scuttled, you, you kind of touched on it very briefly at the beginning there, but can you tell us about the significance of that gin? Yeah, so um, we were approached by um, uh, Scapa 100 here, which is a foundation in Orkney, um, to do a collaboration and do a, do a, do a gin for the, um, the commemoration. Obviously, 2019 was the 100th year um, since the scuttling of the fleets here in Orkney. And uh, for those who are diving and uh, come to Orkney before, um, there's quite a big naval heritage here. We had um, during the World War, so we had, uh, a naval base here. And um, at the end of World War One. The uh, full German fleet was actually interned here in, in Scatterflow um, and it ended up being the biggest naval scuttling of all time. Um, so 50, well, 54 ships actually were actually scuttled, um, 50 plus sunk to the bottom of the sea. Um, at the moment, only eight are still remaining. So between 1922 and uh, about 70s, um, they actually raised most of the frigates off the bottom of the sea, both of them down to uh, the size of the of Glasgow to uh, be decommissioned and you know, reclaim the steel, wow. which is an amazing feat. You know, some of these frigates are you know huge dreadnoughts. Um, you know, back in 1922, to raise a, a frigate from the bottom of the sea and take it and then carry it down to down to Glasgow is it's it's an amazing effort. So yeah, so we did we did the, the bottle of sea glass. Sorry, the scuttle gin for that. Um, Lots of uh, trials and experimentation with the Scuttle 100 team here. Mm -hmm. We had a lovely launch party and um, produced a commemorative bottle, which is uh, sitting here right now. So don't smash it. In, hard to see. Yeah, yeah, beautiful. It is a lovely um, illustration. Obviously, it's a take on your sea glass, but you know, with with the boats there. Um, so yeah, yeah you, I remember you guys told us about the the illustration. Who was it that did the illustration again for your sea glass and Scuttle? So we have, we have uh, the original design we sort of did ourselves to start with and then um, realised that we couldn't you know, produce a bottle label ourselves. So we engaged a lady um, called Caroline um, and she's a fabulous designer 
and uh, she came up with Sea Glass Gin's design in terms of the waves. So all of our label designs are actually a hand cut lino print. So they're drawn, hand cut uh, as a lino, and then stenciled, and then digitalized into the labels. A lot of work goes into each of the labels. Yeah, yeah. Um, they are. And um, you know, there's consistent branding across the across the Yeah, room. she she very much gets our our ethos of the handcrafted nature and the real you know, doing that right from the start to finish, like we do in the distillery where we do everything start to finish here. So, you know, that really supports that having a label that's designed in that way. Yeah. Um, and she has herself been recognised for the sea glass and the branding work that she's done for us in her own field, yeah. which is really exciting for her as well. Yeah, so sea glass was nominated one of the one of the best designs. It actually ended up in a Amazon bestseller book for design and branding. Um, and then uh, just recently, the Orcadian Moon, our new coffee liqueur, won Best Label Design in the World in the Liqueur Awards 2020. Um, so they're obviously doing pretty well in terms yeah. of design. Yeah, yeah. no, I, I'm not. That doesn't surprise me. They are they are beautiful. They are very standout. And um, yeah, your you know your liqueur, as you say, the um, you know the most recent one. It's a little bit different. Is it printed that label as opposed to clear? Yeah. Yeah. So it's, um, it's not see-through, just because the uh, the the cool. is obviously very dark, so a see-through label a see-through label wouldn't be able to see it. So it's yeah, it's absolutely beautiful. Yeah, gorgeous. Yeah. And and obviously we've uh, we visited your distillery last year, was it? Yeah, when just twenty nineteen April? April time. Yeah. yeah. Can you maybe tell oh, us a bit? Yeah, yeah. It was a great visit as well. You know, we came up to see these guys, got to. <laughs> Learn a bit more about everything. So I guess, can you tell us a bit more about the evolution of your distillery and, you know, because I know you had a lot of help sort of getting it built and, and, and other things. Yeah, so because I'm a chartered engineer, I was able to do all the design work for the distillery myself. So all the, um, the drawings and the planning applications and all the structural um, drawings. And then um, we did a lot of the construction ourselves as well. So we had help from neighbouring farmers and for borrowing bits of equipment and um, uh, friends and family and it was a bit of a bit of a self build, wasn't it? It was a self build. So yeah. I think we're probably quite unique in that respect. There's not probably that many distilleries out there who built their own distillery from scratch. Um, it took us about four months in total. Mm. Um, it was the most beautiful winter. It was September. Yeah. It was September to December, and it was blue sky. We were so very oh, lucky. That yeah. is lucky. Yeah. It was just. Perfect, wasn't it, yeah. for the building? So four months in total, they get it up, up and running. Um, and then I think it was the February or January, February, we actually launched Sea Glass and, and the vodka into the wild vodka. Um, yeah. So it's been a, so a lot of a lot of things in the distillery are all all our tables and things we made ourselves. Um, we've got a small water treatment plant in the back here um, that purifies all of our water. So that was my own design. Um, and then. Uh, yeah, we're just yeah. passionate about what we do and make sure it's all handcrafted from start to finish. Well, it's we were yeah. one of the things that we were pleasantly surprised by, which you know you, you you get a sense in the photos, but actually seeing it in person is just although it's quite an industrial build, you know, because you're it's literally you know um, corrugated iron, isn't it? Parts of it, and and you know, but when you get inside, the way that you've you know hung the lights and the interior finish and. Um, it's it very, feels, feels like a home. It feels homely, yeah, yeah. It's very, very homely. So you've done a great job. And obviously the coroner, when you come in there, you welcome a lot of visitors. You've got a shop. Can you tell us a bit more about that? Yeah, so we, we started off obviously just with the as a distillery and then um, we've obviously got a huge tourism network, not so much at the moment, but um, <laughs> uh, out with what's happening at the moment, it's yep. a very, very big tourist destination. Yep. We see sort of about 100 70 cruise liners each year come into Orkney. It's one of the biggest tourist destinations for cruise liners. Um, we see a lot of traffic coming in here, so we decided to put in a bit of a tourist spot. Mm -hmm. um, Jadelle's decorated and, and yeah, uh, made it all lovely. My, yeah, that's my idea. And again, that was built over a winter. I had various friends that came and built IKEA cupboards with me and drawers, and we did all the painting and the blackboards, but it's you know that's that's just how we do it. Yeah. You know, we'd rather do it ourselves and 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 you know our own creativeness. I think. Yeah. yeah. So we do we do tours, tours and tastings, um, and year on year it's just got more and more tourists coming in. So I think last year it was between seven thousand people through the door. Um, our first year was about three and a half thousand. Yeah. So it's just uh, 
getting more and more each time. Wow. So they must we're, be... we're off the beaten track. So yeah. it's very much if it's you know, if it's it's word of mouth and people come in and they say, Oh, we were sent to see you, you know, so and so told us to come and see you, which is lovely. Mm-hmm. You know, and that you know, that's a really nice positive aspect. Yeah. But we like meeting everybody and hearing what they do and you know, there's all these awesome jobs around the world that we never knew existed and yeah. um yeah. It's it's quite it's a hands on shop. Yeah, and they must. I mean, they must arrive. I guess if they're coming off the cruise liners, and you say seven thousand people or seven thousand cruise liners, um, or did you? Say, yeah, did you say seven? Seven thousand visitors. Seven thousand visitors. Sorry, yeah. they must. They must. They must yeah. come by the bus load, do they? Sometimes do they appear down the? Tr- <laughs> yeah, we don't see the buses come here. Okay, just because our roads work out to this area is really really tight. Yeah. Um, we see a lot of people, you know, in their cars, or people get off the cruise liner, and you know, I'm gonna go off and do my own. Yeah, own, own yeah, exploring yeah. Yeah. Like taxi or a minibus and, and those sort of people so it's, um, we're not you know ram packed full of yeah, people it's, it's more like the independent travellers yeah um, you know but I think that's why it's interesting because they've generally got a bit of time to talk yeah. Yeah. as well so we can tell them our story whereas often the cruise passengers might come off and go off on a day trip yeah except for the ones who get in the taxi yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. The thing is, I mean, we've obviously been in this a truly amazing part of Orkney. Because mm. I mean, I remember when we were standing outside the distillery, the sun was just breaking through the clouds over the sea, and it was just, you know, it was just one of those perfect moments, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah, almost. Yeah, it's beautiful. And you're, yeah. and I mean, your home is literally right next door, isn't it? So. Yeah. So the kids pretty, uh, pretty quick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's handy. About fifteen meters. Mm. Like yeah. during the winter time it's, it's a pretty rough commute because the, the wind is so strong if you walk out with a cup of coffee in your hand by the time you get there it's all blown out of there completely <laughs> <laughs> but yeah we're, we're very lucky it's a it's a super spot to be you know to look at to see and everything yeah yeah um, lo- lovely lovely um a lovely parish to be in lots of nice uh folks to live here so yeah. yeah yeah and i think recently we saw a post about uh y- you've you've been growing your own barley <laughs> yeah, so last year. Last year we yeah. did the first batch. So last year we did our we did an acre of test batch barley. Um so we got about four ton of yield off that crop. And that was just basically just first of all, sure that we can actually produce a crop of mm. the of the fields here. Um up in the Orkneys where there is uh hit and miss during the seasons. Yeah. Um but we produced a barley crop and um we were doing experiments with that. And we've actually got another crop in at the moment, which is a different strain of, of barley, which we're just mucking around with at the moment. So the future for us is, you know, we're looking to obviously do some of our own spirits, our own barley grown locally here in Dearness, oats as well as barley. So we're sort of looking at lots of different different options. Nice. Um, and maybe a mix as well. Yeah. So we can, uh, you know, I suppose, increase that provenance even more that we, you know, we're doing everything yeah. grain to glass effectively yeah. Yeah, yeah i guess it'll be really interesting to see how when you do get to a stage where you're you know distilling it to to see how the local landscape and the weather and things like that maybe uh have that influence over it so i guess you know it really will be a, a taste of orkney in, a, in, in your bottle that's right yeah i mean we're very from our distillery obviously you've got the beans so you know what it's like but we're very close to the sea here um so you do end up with a sort of saltiness in, in a lot of the crop and uh, um, I suppose that sort of yeah. that'll shine through into into whatever we produce at the end. Yeah, exactly. exciting. Oh well watch this space. We're excited to see what you what you do with that. Great. Yeah. And um so what have you guys had to do? I know, you know, we, we touched on it before we started um recording, you know, you, you um Adele, you've still got the day job and, and so on, but what have you guys had to do differently um given the lack of tourists to Orkney this summer? And with with lockdown, yeah, I mean, luckily, you know, obviously, we've been going for a few years now, so we've got a good following of, um, I suppose, uh, loyal customers, but also a lot of people who want to experiment and try something they haven't tried before. So, we've seen our our, in, our online sales really increase um, over the last couple of months. Mm-hmm. Of I think everybody's the same. Everyone needs a everyone needs a G and T or something to get through this the lockdown. Yeah, yeah. Um, and homeschooling. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> very so, true. Yeah. yeah, it's just really the online sales. We're getting, we are getting the shop ready to, you know, welcome visitors as and when, yeah. you know, in a safe environment. Um, we've been working hard behind the scenes on a new gin, 
Ooh. Well, a couple of couple of new, new gins, haven't we? Well, yeah. yes, but a new gin for our distillery. Ooh. Um, we have also we don't have anything. We don't. That, we don't have to ready. We don't. Right? No, no. Well, so we're watch this space. Watch this space <laughs> well, on that. yeah, yeah. No, we're honoured to have been given, um, you know, the the heads up there. So uh, very exciting. And you say for the distillery is so is that the idea that you can only get it at the distillery or, or no? Have I? Yeah. No, it'll be it'll be one that we'll be selling across the place. Yeah. Um, but as, as in for the distillery, it's one that we're producing for ourselves. We do do other things for a few other people. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. Pretty fun distilling. Yeah. Um, so we've got a few of those in the pipeline at the moment as well. Yeah, but we've also got a polytunnel. I don't know if you've seen a picture of that. Yes. Mm -hmm. So um, the polytunnel is sort of ready to plant as well. So that was sort of another project, which I suppose having less visitors, you know, our online sales is, is really good. That's fine. But it's given us a bit more time to think about getting the polytunnel actually ready, yeah. you know, and set up for planting and stuff. So that will hopefully be happening in the next... Yeah, we so will we'll as be, well. We'll be growing a lot of our, a lot, a lot of the botanicals that we use in our in our products. Um, obviously, we can't grow all the botanicals in our products. Yeah. Um, but some of the ones that we can we'll grow will we'll grow here and um, a bit more self sufficient, I suppose. Yeah. And uh, just adds that extra something mm. to the, to the product that is you know, homegrown botanicals that have gone into into our products. And it's yeah. a, I guess it's another way to experiment, isn't it? You can keep planting and keep. And trying new things um, yourselves, yeah. you know. Um, yeah. so, so it sounds like you're going to be very, very, very busy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. I'm sure the, the grey hairs are coming through and the baggy eyes. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're oh well, we're 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 very excited to to see about this new gin. So, um, but yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. and and obviously you you guys uh, touched on the fact and you've been around for for a, a number of years now, I guess. What have been some of your favourite highlights over the last four four or so years? Well, lots of those, I suppose. Lots of highlights. There's always a few downs as well, but the, the highlights are, um, you know, we've been to quite a lot of, lot of festivals and shows, we've met some fantastic people, um, you know, and, and working with people like yourselves as well, being great fun. Um, it's, it's lovely when people come back year after year. So, like, yeah. we would have just been at the Highland Show. Yeah. Um, or still there today? No, it's Sunday. No, Sunday. I'm I'm lost on my days at the moment. <laughs> so you know, we're we, travelling back tired. Yeah, now. yeah. We would have been, you know, the Highland Show. And what's lovely about that one is people come back year after year. Yeah. You know, and oh, I came to see you last year, and you recognise them. And the same with the shop, the distillery shop. People yeah. come back and see us each year, and you recognise them, and you know, you've got that connection, which is really lovely. Yeah. Yeah. I suppose you know, you're talking to people who've got a passion for for gin or spirits. Um, so you're sort of sharing stories. Um, you know, there's obviously in Scotland they've got some fantastic, you know, spirit producers, you know, of all types, gin, vodka, rum, everything. They're so and everyone's very helpful together and you know, we try and pull together where we can to share, you know, share boxes, share corks if you run out, that sort of thing, share juniper, you know, it's been yeah. sort yeah. of uh, what comes around goes around. So it's, it's a good way of uh, just sharing and uh, I mean for us it's been a whirlwind Four years, isn't it? Mm. Just very busy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but presume, um, presume, presumably, though that change of pace and that change of industry and like that, you know, you've you've effectively you've che achieved the kind of you've seen through the dream of moving and setting up, and so I, I assume there's no regrets. Not that you would tell us. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, we're we're together as a family now all the time. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. Still married, so he was really Yeah, yeah, we know that feeling. Yeah, you know the kids love living here. Um, you know they're very into animals, or two out of three of them are at the moment. So yeah, it's a good. It's been. It's a good lifestyle. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. Been a good choice. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, for me, from my previous career, which is very busy as well, you know, you know, designing and constructing huge. Um, oil and gas and mining projects all around the world. Um, yeah, this is this is as complicated as well as complicated, but as uh, as busy as, as yeah. well, that was really. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, and I guess as well when it's your when it's your own business, you know, it's your own baby, and I think you, you care about it more. You work twice as hard because it is yours, and what you do working for someone else. And I think you know, with a lot of the gin makers we know, and we've come to come to know as friends as well. You know, you guys are a great example of that of what can be achieved mm. in a remote 
island location with a bit of heart, a bit of soul and a lot of hard work. So, you know, I think uh, tip my hat to you is for that. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's cheesy as it sounds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess um, just to, to, to end things, I mean, you've, you've kind of, I guess you've given us a bit of a, um, you know, what, what we can expect. But in general, what's, things are, have been very different this summer, but what, what's next for Dearness Distillery? So, up until before the coronavirus sort of kicked in, we had um, the plans for an expansion. We had a new building going to go in, and um, you know we're looking at putting in a, a nice cafe and things there as well. Um, but we're still going to do that. We are, but it's smaller. It's, it's going to be staged a bit more differently to what it was. Yeah. Obviously, we don't know what the knock-on effects of this of this is going to be yet in terms of what's happening there. But we, you know, the, the reason for putting the barley in as well is to we are looking to do a whiskey here. Um, mm-hmm. It'll be a, um, a malt whiskey as well as grain whiskey, um, and we'll actually do the maltings on site. So we'll have our own malt house. So we're basically doing everything from start to finish here. Um, and we've got the polytunnel. Polytunnel. New yeah. gin. Gin. Yeah. Oh well. This gin. And so yeah, very busy. Yeah. Today. Ready for Christmas. <laughs> yeah, I know that will be the next thing. Yeah. We we have learnt each year we get a bit earlier and getting ready for Christmas so so that's next on the list is getting organised for Christmas yeah um, so yeah you guys have always got lovely hampers I mean I noticed I mean, and they aren't even exclusively Christmas are they because you guys have I noticed they're all here yeah they yeah. sell they seem to sell very well don't they yeah. and yeah. they we've had some lovely they've, they've been uh, very popular over lockdown and we've had some super messages um you know, we, we put the hampers together ourselves and they get hand tied and hand written, you know, tags and everything. And it's just lovely to see what people have written, you yeah. know, and it, it's it's really warming, mm-hmm. you know, and, and very positive. So we enjoy doing that as yeah. well. You know, it's nice to feel that you're doing that for somebody. Absolutely. Mm. And, and presum- um, presumably then that's a mix of you're, you're posting them out and then there's a lot of local, would there be a lot of local drop offs as well? Yeah, yeah. So a lot of lot of, lot of local support. Obviously, um, you know, through the lockdown here, Orkney's been so supportive to, to all the businesses, not just mm-hmm. just as us, but the meat and cheese and dairy and things like that. Quite quite self sufficient here. Um, luckily, we've got quite a few breweries. We are. We've whiskey, got everything. Whiskey, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Thank goodness. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Ice cream, everything. So yeah. uh, it's been uh, very well supported from 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 a lot of locals and uh, and obviously. People all across the across the UK. Yeah, brilliant. I feel like I can't end the interview without acknowledging. Is it a sheep that has been making that noise? <laughs> it is. Yeah, <laughs> Just to make sure. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we've got sheep at the we've we've got That's sheep at the back sheep. of the field. Yeah. Well, they're actually our daughters. So our, our middle daughter, who just turned twelve, they are. She has four sheep and three lambs. Wow. And all she wants to be is a sheep farmer. Fantastic, that's, good for her. So, so that's the big sheep talking to the lambs. It's all, yeah. yeah. <laughs> They're obviously having a good chin wag out there. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> no, we're the same. We can see sheep at the back of our of our garden as well. So we're we're quite remote, but uh, but yeah, just just thought we would we would make sure it was that and not you know <laughs> someone someone in distress or. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. But um, but no well that that concludes the interview I guess um, that was that was all the questions we had for you guys so thank you very much for taking the time to chat to us um, it's been lovely to catch up um, it's a shame it isn't face to face but it's the next best thing right now I suppose isn't it so yeah. Yeah. yeah we're all getting used to this way of doing things so yeah, yeah. that's it yeah. we're we're practically pros now. <laughs> <laughs> YouTube channel soon, you? Well, we actually do. You, you, you're, <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> it's not a la- it's not a live thing. We just put the videos up on there. But yeah, for anyone that doesn't catch it live, they can always they can always go catch on there on YouTube, and, and yeah. catch it later. Yeah. So, but no, seriously, guys, thanks very much for your time. It's been a pleasure and uh, some a lot of exciting things to look forward to from you guys. So, um, we look we look forward yeah. to that. Yeah. Well, thanks for having and us. likewise, yeah. yep. Yeah. 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 You, you take care then. Take care. And See you soon. Speak soon. Bye. Okay, that was great. Just had I noticed we had one last bath from the sheep there yeah. on the way out. Um, but no, that was uh, that was great and some 
exciting news a new gin coming from Dearness this summer yeah. I feel like yeah. we got the scoop on that so um, yeah so we'll watch this space yeah but thanks again for joining us and uh, checking out the video and we'll catch you all soon I guess stay safe thanks, thanks again <laughs>